and every one of you watching online across America and around the world. I want you to do something real quick. I want you to turn the volume up on your device, whether it's your cell phone, maybe it's your speaker system, your surround sound, maybe you got some earbuds in. I want you to turn that volume up so loud that those buds vibrate out of your ear. Get ready to blow the speakers out of your phone, out of your speaker system. Because when I count to three, we're turning it up at the Summerall tab. You're going to turn it up right where you are. And what we're going to do is take 30 seconds and give God the kind of praise that we know will break the heavens over this place and over the place that you're watching today. I believe over the next five to seven minutes, miracles are going to happen. Y'all aren't shouting with me like you should. Miracles are going to happen. Chains are going to break. Bodies are going to be healed. Within the next five minutes, destinies are going to be turned around. Curses are going to be reversed. I prophesy prison doors are getting ready to open. I need you to praise him in proportion to what you believe he's going to do. One, two, three, shout right now. Praise Him like you believe the heavens are open over your life. Praise Him like you believe something is shifting, something is breaking, something is moving. Praise Him like something is happening. Never lost the battle. He's never lost. He's never lost the battle. He's never lost. He's never lost the battle. He's never lost the battle. something about prophetically declaring and decreeing whatever it is you want, whatever it is you need. Yes. Then when it shows up, when it happens, you stand on the other side of that word. Come on, sir. Uh, And you point back to it and you say, this is that. This is what we've been praying for, asking for, believing God to do. Yeah. This is a prophetic principle all throughout Scripture. Listen, I'm prophesying revival is getting ready to invade your life. This is a principle we see all throughout the Scripture. It was the prophet Joel who prophesied and said, it'll come to pass in the last days that God will pour out His Spirit. Fast forward now to Acts chapter 2, day of Pentecost. Peter stands up with a loud voice. And he says, this is that spoken by the prophet Joel. It's not coming. It's not on its way. It's here. Do you realize that even John, who prophesied the coming of Jesus, he said, there's one coming after me. He's greater than me. He's bigger than me. Jesus stood up on the other side of that prophetic word when he sat down with John's disciples. And he said, John wants to know if it is me. Go back and tell him, it is me, me is it. I is he and he is I. This is that. My friends, there is something about declaring and decreeing what it is you want, what it is you need. And then when it shows up, standing on the other side of that word, declaring this is that, this is what we've been praying for, asking for, and believing God to do. Hear me today. God is looking for a generation of men and women that are not just speaking about revival on its way. Revival is coming. No, he's looking for a generation that'll stand on the other side of every prophetic word and say this is that this is the move this is the revival for those of you that would say when is my body going to get healed this is the move for those of you that want to know when is god going to restore my marriage save my children i'm making an announcement today this is that this is the move this is the revival we came today to declare and decree revival is here it is not coming it is not on its way it's shown up to you Rhonda. i see you're watching Susie and Tonya in Tennessee, it's on its way to you. It's in your home. It's in your marriage. It's in your money. It's in your body. I need someone in this room and watching all across America and around the world to shout revival is here. Come on and shout like you. Revival is here. Revival is here. I want to take a moment before I minister the word to you. I feel the spirit of God moving in such an amazing way. I'm 41 years old, been in church my whole life. People want to know, what is revival? Is it a series of services strung together, a 
some songs that are sung, an event that's strung out for months and maybe a year. God answers the question of what revival is because he takes the prophet Ezekiel. I feel something happening here. Stay with me. He takes him to a valley of dry bones and he asks him, can these bones live? He said, Lord, you know, then watch this. He said, you prophesy then to those bones. He prophesied of the winds of my spirit that they would begin to blow, that I would lay muscle and flesh and breathe the breath of life into these dead bodies. What is revival? Revival is simply this. When everything that you think is dead comes to life again. When the dream, the vision, the destiny, the plan, the purpose, the marriage, the money, the job, everything that you think is dead when it comes to life again. I've often been asked the question on top of that, how does revival come? We know what it is, but how do we get it? How do we bring it? The answer again is in Ezekiel 37. Can these bones live, Lord, you know? Then you prophesy. Your marriage knows your voice. Your body knows your voice. Revival is not just something that God sends. It's something that we decree. Hallelujah. So I'm looking for people all across America and around the world tonight. Not to declare that something is coming, but to make an announcement to cancer and to make announcement to that divorce announcement that your wife just made to you. You make a bigger announcement. Divorce isn't in my house. Revival's in my house. Cancer's not in my house. Revival's in my house. And while you feel like shouting, you better shout revivals in this nation. It is in this world. God is visiting our nation like never before. If you believe it, give him a shout of praise. So right now, I stretch my hands towards you. Stretch my hands towards you in faith. And we speak to cancer now to go. Look, we don't do these things to be cliche. We do these things because Jesus gave us the power and the authority right. to do so. And those of you that need healing today, listen, there are prayer partners that are available right now to pray. And not just prayer partners. These are Holy Ghost anointed people that will pray in a miracle for you. That number is on the screen. Dial it right now as I pray. Cancer, you are a name. Yeah. And at the mention of the name of Jesus, you've got to go. Cancer, you go. Diabetes, you go. Arthritis, lupus, fibromyalgia, blood disorders, heart conditions, drug addiction, break in the name of Jesus. I feel like generational curses in the next 30 minutes are going to begin to break. If you need that, just turn around because there's a turnaround. Generational curses are breaking. I speak to depression and I break you now in the name of Jesus. I speak to that spirit that's telling you to take yourself out. You got to go. You got to break. I declare and decree freedom is in your house it's not knocking on your door it just kicked it down and let itself in I declare freedom is in your house freedom is in your mind freedom is in your body I need someone to shout like you believe freedom freedom I am honored to be able to stand this great tabernacle that has impacted the world for over 40 years. Yes. I honor, well, I just don't know what other to call him than the general. He is one of a kind. Every generation you see someone uniquely anointed by God as he is. And the love and the respect that I have for Pastor Rod Pars is hard to put into words the impact that he's had on my life, the impact that he's had on your life. And I think wherever you are around the world, you need to join those of us that are in this room as we honor this giant, this general, Pastor Rod Parsley. Can we give Pastor our love tonight? We love him. We thank God for him. Thank God for Miss Joni and, of course, Miss Ashton. What God's doing in her life and ministry is amazing and thankful for Mr. Austin and everything God is doing for him. I believe that God has sent me into this moment to reveal something to you that the enemy is so after. Everything that we are going through with this pandemic, 
what we're seeing with racism out of control, the political narrative and the confusion in that narrative is an attempt to break connection and relationship because fruit comes when we are connected. And I have been sent here by God tonight. I'm not gonna preach a camp meeting message. I'm not gonna give you three things to shout about. I'm gonna give you a lot more than three to shout about. But I came to strengthen you and solidify your connection to God, to this house, whether your connection is local or online globally, there is something to be understood in the power of relationship. And I prophesy to you now, you didn't even know it, but you're in the right place at the right time. You're around the right people. And wherever you are, I don't care if you're in your living room, your bedroom, some of you are even watching from your bathroom. We're not mad at you. Thank God you can see us and we can't see you. So you just carry on, keep on keeping on. But wherever you are, however you can do it, can we give God one more praise like we believe he's about to do something incredible. Thank you guys, don't go too far. Man, you keep singing like that, Jesus is gonna come quicker you realize you're going to bring the rapture even quicker. But thank you guys. Thank you. Those of you that are in the house, I want you to open up your heart. Those of you that are watching online, I want you to open up your heart as well. And those that are watching online, that comment button is your shout button. Come on, somebody. Can anyone shout in this room here? Because we got the ability to shout in this room, but your shout is typing in your comments putting those emojis on there. If the preacher's preaching good, go ahead and put some fire emojis. I love reading those because I believe the fire of the Holy Ghost is in this place and it's in your house. If I were to place a title on our discussion, I believe the title would be in the form of a question. And the question would simply be this, what's in your house? <laughs> What's in your house? I'm asking you this question directly, and I don't expect you to even answer it audibly or even fully understand what I mean by it, but in the next few minutes, not only are you going to understand it, I believe you'll be able to answer that question. The question is, what's in your house? I think sometimes in life, it is so easy to focus on what we do not have, that we lose sight of, we lose appreciation for the things that we do have. I'm preaching better than you're shouting. Today, we're going to fix that. We're going to adjust that because there's a good chance you actually have more in your house than what you think you have in your house. So let's talk about that today. I want them to put my scripture up on the screen. Second Kings chapter four. I want to read just about seven verses to you here. I'm in, I'm in a word church. I'm in a word church. So I can read some scripture here. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha saying, your servant, my husband is dead. Let's go on to the next verse. And you know what your servant or that your servant feared the Lord and the creditor has now come to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, what do you want me to do for you? Tell me what do you have in your house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. I'm gonna preach this thing tonight. Let's go on to the next verse. So he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere from all of your neighbors, there's no meaningless details, borrow that from your neighbors, empty vessels and do not gather just a few. Next verse. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. Next verse, verse five, then pour it into all of those vessels and set aside the full ones. Oh, we're getting ready to have church. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she began to pour it out. Y'all have just a couple more verses in you. Come on, next verse. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. One last verse, verse seven. And she came and told the man of God all that had, all that had happened. And he said to her, go and sell the oil and pay your debt 
and you and your sons live on the rest. I want to know tonight what's in your house. What's in your house. I want to first begin to talk about this woman who is the central figure, the central character to our story. I want to talk about the connection and the relationship that she has with the prophet Elisha. Your Bible tells you that she was the wife of one of the sons of the prophets. The sons of the prophets was a school, a company of prophets that studied under the tutelage of Elisha. And it was one of these students, one of these men who died. And in his death, he leaves his wife a widow. But the scripture gives us even more specific detail that his death leaves her in such dire straits financially that she's going to have to sell her sons to the creditors, to sell them to pay their debts. Make this real. Can you imagine being in such dire straits financially that you've got to sell your kids to pay your bills? Now, I know there are some of us who are parenting, especially those who have little children who like to scream at night. Some of us have thought about giving our kids away. And some of y'all are like, I didn't know I could sell them. Look, you don't get your hopes up because whoever bought them would probably return them in the first 15 minutes. But this woman is in such desperate need that she has to sell her children or is at the point of selling her children to pay her debt. She comes to Elisha and as she approaches him, stay with the pastor, stay with the preacher, because I've learned in life that approach is everything. Mm. If you don't believe me, let me give you a couple examples. If you are going to interview for your dream job and you blow the approach, you're going to blow the interview. If you blow the interview, you're not getting the job. You young men, I see some Valor students here tonight. You young lions, take some advice from this aging lion. I'm not old. I'm just getting there. If you blow the proposal to the woman of your dreams, she's probably not going to say yes because approach matters. Approach is everything. Ask any pilot of any aircraft. They'll tell you when it comes to their landing that approach is everything. It's the matter of life and death. And as this woman approaches Elisha, she does so by telling him of her relationship with him and her connection to him, even though she probably never met him personally. She tells him, I still have a connection to you, and it is through my husband. And she begins to use words like this. Instead of referring to her dead husband just as her husband, she says, your servant. He's not just my husband. He is your servant. Your servant is dead. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you got to stop praying to God about your son and your daughter and say, God, they're your son. They're your daughter. Because there's something to be understood in the power of relationship. There's something to be understood in the power of connection. I need you to understand there's just some things you can get in life because you are connected to the right people. You're in relationship with the right people. There's some things you can get because you are in the right place at the right time around the right people. And don't sit here and act like God didn't know you'd be watching online in the middle of a global pandemic, but he brought us into your home today. He brought us onto your your computer today onto your cell phone to let you know you are in the right place at the right time around the right people and because you connected with this church who's connected to this God there are some things you can expect to happen over the next few minutes those miracles we've been prophesying get ready because something is released when the power of connection is understood and I came to tell you that not only are we connected to one another but our connection is pure because we're connected to him alpha and omega beginning and the end the first the last his name is Jesus and I need someone in this house and someone in your house to thank God for the power of relationship thank him for the power of connection I'm connected to you I'm connected to him and you better add a 15 seconds of praise onto that and thank God for your connection to this house to this man of God pastor parsley thank God because something happens in the power of connection I'm taking you somewhere I've got to shift your focus now from this woman's approach to her response because the church has gotten really good at getting God's attention but when we get his attention how well do we respond when he 
asks her, what do you want me to do for you? He follows up that question with a secondary question. What is in your house? I'll never stop being amazed at how God wants our involvement in our miracle. What do you want me to do for you? She tells him. And instead of giving her an answer, he gives her another question. What is in your house? I feel this in my spirit. If she was a true Pentecostal Christian, she would have said, by faith, everything I need. By faith, not just enough, but more than enough. But true faith is not the denial of reality. True faith is the acknowledgement of reality. But then the acknowledgement that there is a reality that supersedes that reality. She said, you want to know what my issue is? What I have? Here it is. Nothing. Nothing. Zip, zip, zero, nada. Nothing. But here is what's so powerful about this story. She does not stop there. She does not leave it there. She says nothing but. I came to put a but in somebody's faith. She said nothing but this one little jar of oil. I came to tell you tonight that perspective is everything. Your kid ain't as bad off as what you think they are. Your marriage isn't as bad off as what your friends have told you it is. I came to tell you that perspective is everything. And I came to shift and adjust your perspective and get your eyes off what you don't have and to begin to thank God and praise him for what you do have. I need to give you 15 seconds to do that right now. It may not be everything you want. You may not be everywhere you want to be, but bless God, you ain't where you used to be. Praise him for what you got. Praise him for what. Praise him. I, I know, I know that he may not be the best husband in the world, but at least you got one. Don't you remember two years ago, you crying out to God, how lonely you were, how bad. Oh Lord, consider your servant Ruth and how she needs a bow at. Now you got one. You complain it. Huh. It may not be the best job, but at least you got one. And for those of you that don't have one, you got breath in your body and a spirit in your spirit that can help you give birth to one. Perspective is everything. And I believe that God is often bound and limited to how we can move in our life because our perspective itself is limited. Had that woman said nothing, that's what God would have given her. But because she shifted her perspective and she broadened her perspective and began to see what she didn't have and thank God for what she did, God brought her a miracle of provision that her oil would never run dry again. I need you to take 30 seconds and praise him for what you already got. Praise him for what you already. Here's the key to this. Here's the key to this. Elisha says to her, what's in your house? She says, nothing but this jar of oil. And he tells her, go out and borrow empty vessels. Watch the pastor. Empty vessels. And let me tell you where to get them. Get them from the people that you're connected to. How often do we fail to take advantage of the people that God has placed in our life and the people that he's placed around us because we don't like their personality? We don't like the stories other people have told us about them. And we do not take advantage. You students take advantage of the oil that's sitting on the pews you're sitting in. And every one of you watching take advantage. 
For 40 years, this man of God has dripped oil and dripped power and dripped presence and dripped anointing over television cameras around the world. You better take advantage and thank God for the power of relationship and for the power of connection. He said to this woman, you go out and you begin to take advantage of those people that I placed in your life. Those neighbors would have given her those jars any other day she would have asked. And maybe the fact you don't have what you need is simply because you've yet to ask. Go tell them what you need. And don't borrow a little bit. You borrow a lot. And there is something to be understood of gleaning from and learning from people that God has placed around you. Don't you ever, ever, ever be threatened or intimidated by people that are on a higher level than you. Because when you do, you'll keep yourself here. But if you honor them, if you celebrate them and you learn from them, God will pick you up, turn you around, and he will set you on a higher place than you could ever dream or you could ever imagine. And I came to tell you in this day and in this hour... God is getting ready to lift you up and pick you up like never before. And it ain't got nothing to do with you. It has to do with the fact you're in the right place at the right time around the right people. I wish you'd put a praise in the face of the devil and let him know no matter what I've been through, I'm still connected. The story shows us that often in life, we cannot get from God what we need on our own. We need those people that he has placed around us and those people that he has placed in connection with us. Those of you that are watching online, like never before, you need this ministry. You need an uncompromised message that has not in 1% been diluted over 40 years of its execution. I did taping with Pastor recently and I watched him talk about the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the same clarity, the same conviction, and the same no filter that he's had for over 40 years. And I'm prophesying to you that if there was ever an hour that you needed to stay close. But I don't even know him. She didn't know the prophet. You don't have to have a personal relationship to be connected with the house. And I came to tell you that 40 years of preaching, prophesying, impartation, Hands being laid, bodies laid out on this stage and all over this vast auditorium. God is getting ready to take all 40 years of it, press it together, shake it together, and cause it to come running over. You don't understand World Harvest Church and those of you that are partners of this ministry that the best really is yet to come. I I am having a hard time saying these words because I know what's already happened. I know what's already been done, but I came to tell you, baby, you ain't even seen nothing yet. God has saved a wine and he has saved an oil that you ain't never drank before and you've never had it dripped on you before. And I came to tell you in this hour and in this season, God is getting ready to release it all at once. I need someone to shout, scream, and praise God like you believe it. Blow up the screen. Come on, give us some comments. Give us some emojis. Something is about to be released through your connection. I need the worship team in just a moment because I feel the prophetic coming on me. My children are 11 and 9. They're going on 29 and 27. We, my wife and I call them our little bosses. They are the prototypical preacher's kid. They want what they want and they're not happy when they don't get it. They act just like their mother. Pray for them. <laughs> it's, it's me. I'm the one standing in need of prayer. Every now and again, when my children are walking around the hallways of the church 
in a time they're not supposed to be because we try to get them to act like everybody else. But if daddy sends them to get something, my children love telling an usher who's about to tell them to go sit down, "Uh, uh, uh-uh-uh, daddy sent me. There are places that are off limits to you. There are levels in the spirit that you did not pay a price for. There are miracles that you're not even qualified for. But because of your connection to this house, you just got to tell the devil, "Uh uh-uh, Joker, I'm allowed to come here and grab my stuff. There is something to be understood in the power of relationship. I cannot tell you clear enough that you are one relationship away, one connection away from stepping into a dimension eye has not seen and ear is not heard. Every time my wife and I have stepped into another dimension, another level of life, another season of life, it is because of a relationship. I cannot tell you the levels of anointing and favor and open doors and opportunity and even resources coming to our ministry since I got hooked up with this crazy preacher preaching in a cornfield in the middle of Ohio by the name of Pastor Rod Parsley. And I tell you that the same God that opened the those doors for me is getting ready to open them for you. You're a part of the house and there's something in your house and I prophesy to you, it is enough oil to cause a spillover and an overflow. If you believe it, you better shout, shout like you believe it. I want you to understand today, every one of you watching, That the connection that you have to this house, the connection that you have to this ministry simply means that whatever happens in this house is going to happen in your house. I want you to hear that. That whatever happens in this house, because you're connected. I could preach to you about miracles, but you'll get one if you stay connected. I could prophesy to you, but you got enough prophets coming in here, but you got to be connected enough to listen. I'm talking to someone who the enemy is trying to talk out of staying connected. Do not break your connection when you are one pour away from overflow. I'm going to let you just sit on that one and praise him for Joe. No, no, no. One drip away from overflow. For those of you that are watching online, don't you think you're going to escape this moment? Because I don't care if you're in your living room. I don't care if you're rocking your baby. Put a set of headphones on that baby. You're getting ready to praise. You're getting ready to worship. Because your poor is your praise. Your poor is your worship. And as you begin to pour out of what is on the inside of you. Everything that is in this house and has been flowing through this house for 40 years is getting ready to invade (laughs) your house. It's invading your mind, your marriage, your money, your body, your health. It's invading your family, your finances, your job, your business, your career. I don't know what you're waiting for, but if I were you, I'd begin to pour. I would begin to praise. You ought to put it in the comment thread. I'm pouring. I'm praising. I'm worshiping. I'm shouting. I'm pouring out everything that is in me. And as I do, miracles are invading my life. Miracles are invading my life. 
my family. Miracles are invading my church. I'm talking to you pastors out there that are watching. You want to get yourself off your couch for 30 seconds and do what you tell everybody else to do. You ought to shout right now. You ought to praise right now because the oil that's in this house is getting ready to invade your house now. Somebody shout. Come on and shout. Hey, we're prophesying yeah. this. this is the praise Let your marriage hear it. Let your body hear it. Let your Sing church again. hear it. Let your children this hear it. Hey. 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 Oh, yes. This is the praise maker dead man walk again. Say it again. Come on and shout wherever you are. Come on, in America, around the world, I want you to shout. Jim and Carol in Baltimore, we're shouting with you. Come on, Charm, watching from my state, the state of Florida. Come on, somebody shout with her. Let's lift up a shout. Come on, come on, lift up, lift up a shout. Yeah. I want them to keep that beat. I want them to keep that beat because something is shifting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something is breaking. Yes, and amen. I talked to you a little bit ago about revival, what it is, how do we get it. I'm a PK man. I grew up in church. We sang so many songs about revival that it was on its way, that it was coming. We prayed about revival, but revival is not something that God sends. Revival is something that we declare. Revival is something that we decree. Your Bible says in Psalm 107, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Do you know that that word so doesn't just mean so, it means to declare, it means to decree, it means to answer and to appoint. God sent me here today to tell you as the redeemed to put a say so on your daughter, put a say so on your son, put a say so on that doctor's report that says you got months to live. Revival is not something God sends. We declare it and we decree it. And over these next three moments, as we prophesy to bones to live, I prophesy to you that everything in your life that is dead is coming back to life again. Shout! Yes! 
want that girl in the red jacket. Come here. That's you. You're come in the on, red Kai. jacket. Yay. Come on, come here. Come here. I just saw you going. And the Lord told me to tell you that your dance is anointed. Come on, come and it on. is anointed to break generational curses. And I prophesy to you as you dance in this season, hey, 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 as you hey, dance hey. on your mountains, and as you dance through your valleys, every generational curse will be broken. You better shout for her. some people in this room but I'm not just talking to the people in this room I'm talking to you in your living room your bedroom wherever you are but there are some people in this room that represent a greater number of people that are watching online and I don't know who you are in this room but when I say this I need you to come up on this stage because when I lay my hands on the people on this stage, the same power that touches them is going to touch you. There are three people in this room that have been dealing with shame. And God is going to use you in this moment, not only allowing shame to be broken off of you, but he's going to use the touch on you in this room to touch the people watching across America and around the world. Who are those three people? You need shame broken. Just getting out of that seat and running up here might break it. Where are those three people that need shame broken? I need you to run up here right now where are those three people that need shame broken because when I break it off of you I'm breaking it off of every one of you that are watching I break it I break it I break it in the name of Jesus he that the sun sets free throw your hands up in the air when I lay my hands on your belly shame is gonna go and confidence faith and power will fill you now I break it I break it I break it in the name of Jesus shame you gotta go you got to go. As I pray for them, I pray for you. I don't care about the abortion. I don't care about the divorce. I don't care about the three husbands you had before. You are redeemed and you are forgiven. And the blood of Jesus has spoken a better word. I need someone to give God praise like you believe the blood has given you a better word. take 60 seconds and we're going to lose all dignity almost all of it's gone already but we're going to give God I mean the craziest and most radical praise and you're not going to watch us you're going to participate and here's what we're praying that spirit of racism that spirit of this pandemic 
that has tried to separate and stop the church. The devil is a liar. I declare and decree that revival has shown up on the shores of the United States of America. Hatred cannot stop it. Pandemics cannot stop it. No politician can stop it. I came to tell you with the same power that the Holy Ghost invaded the upper room. He has shown up in the United States of America and for the next 60 seconds we're going to dance on the head of the devil and let him know the church is still in control. Somebody shout. One more thing we're going to shout for, then I have an instruction for you. But as I was standing here praising, looking across this room, and this is for those of you watching, those are, this is for those of you that are a part of valor, I began to see mantles that others were supposed to carry. But they broke their connection before it was falling upon them. You don't have to know what it is. You don't have to know whose it was supposed to be. But if you would shout for 90 seconds in this room and in your living room, in your bedroom, I believe that stuff other people left behind is about to chase you down and overwhelm you. Shout now!
Now I need you one more time to lift up your voice and give God your praise, give God your worship. Come on. All across this room, in your room, wherever you are, bless him.